Imagine being known as the most prolific female murderer in history. This is the chilling legacy of Elizabeth Bathory. Born to a noble family in Hungary in 1560, Elizabeth was no ordinary child. From an early age, she exhibited signs of a deeply disturbing personality, a trait that would later fuel her infamous reign of terror. Elizabeth was married off at a tender age to Ferenc Nardesti, a union that would set the stage for her blood-soaked trajectory. Nardesti, a powerful and influential figure, unwittingly played a part in enabling Elizabeth's darkest desires. Their marital home became a dreadful playground where Elizabeth's sadistic tendencies began to unravel. The death of her husband in 1604, however, would mark a pivotal moment in her life. Bereft of his restraining influence, Elizabeth was free to indulge her monstrous inclinations unchecked. This period would see the Countess at her most malevolent, setting in motion a reign of terror that would forever stain the annals of history. Her husband's death in 1604 marked the beginning of Elizabeth's most brutal years. With her husband gone, Elizabeth's sadistic tendencies began to truly flourish. The chilling echo of his departure seemed to trigger something dark and insatiable within her. Elizabeth Bathory, the woman once revered for her beauty and status, seemed to morph into a figure of unfathomable terror. With her husband no longer around to curb her sinister urges, stories began to emerge of the horrifying acts committed within the walls of her grand estate. Rumors circulated of young servant girls, barely in their teens, being subjected to unimaginable torture at the hands of the noblewoman. It was said that Elizabeth would brutalize these innocent souls for the slightest of errors, her punishments growing increasingly gruesome with each passing day. Yet, the most harrowing part of these tales was not the physical torment these girls endured, but rather the reason behind their suffering. It was alleged that Elizabeth had developed an obsession with eternal youth, and she believed that the key to achieving this lay in the blood of these young girls. A macabre fascination gripped her, leading her to bathe in their blood in the hopes of preserving her own beauty. This dreadful ritual, enacted with chilling regularity, cast a shadow of fear and dread over her estate. The scale of her crimes was staggering. With estimates ranging from 30 to as many as 600 victims, the reign of terror Elizabeth Bathory held over her dominion was unlike anything the region had ever seen. The sheer number of lives snuffed out in their prime by this ruthless woman is a chilling testament to her bloodlust. As the body count rose, so did the whispers of the Countess's monstrous deeds. The local populace lived in constant fear, their hearts heavy with sorrow for the young lives lost and with dread for those yet to fall into the Countess's clutches. As her crimes escalated, so did the whispers of her unspeakable deeds. The whispers soon turned into cries for justice, setting the stage for the investigation that would ultimately bring an end to Elizabeth Bathory's reign of terror. In 1610, the whispers became too loud to ignore, and an investigation into Elizabeth's actions was launched. It was a time when the castle's stone walls could no longer hold secrets. Georgi Thirdzo, a palatine of Hungary, was tasked with the investigation, one that would soon unravel a web of horror and bloodshed. Thurzo, a man known for his meticulousness, began his inquiry by gathering testimonies from those who lived in and around the castle. The accounts were chilling. Servants spoke in hushed tones about their missing companions. Villagers shared tales of young girls who never returned from the castle. The whispers had become deafening cries for justice. As the investigation proceeded, the castle itself bore silent witness to the atrocities committed within its walls. The discovery of secret chambers, littered with remnants of gruesome acts, sent shivers down even the most hardened spines. The evidence was mounting, and the reality of Elizabeth Bathory's macabre reign was coming to light. The trial, held in 1611, was a spectacle that captured the attention of the entire kingdom. The testimonies were read, the evidence presented. Each piece of the puzzle painted a terrifying picture of the woman once revered as a noblewoman. The court was left in stunned silence. Elizabeth Bathory, the blood countess, stood accused of unfathomable crimes. In the end, the verdict was unanimous. 
Elizabeth Bathory was sentenced to life imprisonment, a fate befitting her monstrous deeds. She was confined to a room within her castle, the windows bricked up, leaving only small slits for ventilation and the passing of food. It was a fitting irony that the woman who had once reigned over the castle was now a prisoner within its walls. Elizabeth Bathory, once a noblewoman, ended her days walled inside a room of her castle, a prisoner of her own monstrous actions. Her reign of terror had ended, but her legacy, as one of history's most notorious female killers, had only just begun. Elizabeth Bathory died in 1614, but her story did not end with her. Like a dark shadow stretching across the centuries, her tale continues to captivate and horrify us, spawning a myriad of myths and legends. Some paint her as a bloodthirsty monster, others as a misunderstood victim of political machinations. Her life has inspired countless works of literature, film, and even music, all seeking to decipher the enigma that was the Blood Countess. The question of Bathory's guilt continues to be a topic of heated debate. Some argue that she was a scapegoat, a powerful woman brought down by the jealous men of her time. Others suggest that her crimes were the result of a deranged mind, tormented by possible mental health issues. Her upbringing, too, plays a significant part in this discourse. Raised in an era of brutality, with a family notorious for their cruel antics, it's plausible that Elizabeth's actions were influenced by her environment. Yet even the most disturbing family traditions can hardly justify the gruesome acts she's accused of. Perhaps one of the most persistent legends surrounding Bathory is her obsession with youth and beauty. The infamous tales of her bathing in the blood of virgins to maintain her youthful appearance have entrenched her in popular culture as a vampiric figure. While there's no concrete evidence to support these claims, they certainly add an eerie layer to her already macabre story. Despite the horror associated with her name, Bathory's life provides an intriguing insight into the power dynamics of her time. Her story is a stark reminder of the lengths people might go to preserve their status, the ease with which truth can be distorted, and the enduring fascination society has with the macabre. So as we delve deeper into the darkness that was Elizabeth Bathory, we are drawn into a complex web of fear, power, and the human capacity for cruelty. Elizabeth Bathory's story is a chilling reminder of the darkness that can lurk behind the facade of nobility and beauty.